Hello friends, welcome. I'm Chromatic Sauce and today we're going to watch me draw. First thing I did was take a kneaded eraser and I erased the initial layer of graphite off the paper. Then I went in with a few light gray pencils to start building my shading on the ear. Now I know the ear, it looks much darker in the photo at this point. I didn't want to go too dark too fast. I wanted to make sure I built the structure of each strand of hair and mapped out each section of fur before I started going in with darker and darker grays. This helped make sure I didn't make the image too dark and it helped me make sure that I was putting my darks in the right spot. So all I'm doing now is building the structure. I'm focusing a little bit on depth, but I'm mainly focusing on building the shapes that I need. To help me before I start adding some depth is I'm filling in the eye. The blackness of the eye helps give me a little bit of a ground level to know how dark is my darkest gonna be and I know how to build my values out from the darkest color because we know the shades go from black to white. Especially in a white dog, there's a huge range of colors. So after I get the eye in, that's when I can start building the dimension in the photo. I can start deepening up the shadows and building it up. Now I'm still going slow because I don't want to make it too dark since this is a white dog. I don't want to make it uh, muddy or too shadowy because I can always add more shading but I can't take shading back if I add too much. If I make it too dark then there's no going back for the most part with color pencil. Same thing near the nose of the dog. I wanted to map out the fur before I started in with any more detail. I didn't really focus on getting the shading as dark as it needed to be as much as I was focusing on the shapes at this point. I'm adding a little bit more shading as I go deepening it up, smoothing out the hairs as I add more shadows. Each pass over the drawing, I do use darker and darker pencils because since I have the black down there already, I can tell how much more depth I need to add to the image. And that's when I decide to start going straight into the nose. This way I can get all my shadows in on that part. The nose is pretty detailed in this photo, so it was easy to completely finish the nose and then build shadows and structure off of that. And then you can see me start shading the shoulder a little bit because uh, every time I add a little bit more color to the paper it helps me perceive the depth a little bit more and I can start seeing how much darker I need areas to be. That's when I start going in with the black and I start shading around the eye a lot more. I start shading around the ear to be much darker and I start building structure more. Then I decide I wanted to start on the right side of the face. Uh, I start with the eye and I fill that in just to give me a little bit of a basis to build off of. Then I can start building more shadows on the right side of the face. Once again, for that side of the face, I start with the ear. Once again, I'm using lighter colors, but I know this time, since the light source is on the right side of the face, that these shadows won't be getting as dark as the left side, so I'm being even more careful. I'm really slowly mapping out the shapes that these hairs are being, and I'm using much lighter pencils than I did on the left side, because a lot of these sections of hair do look pretty white and a little bit more undefined, since they are in a much lighter area area. It's pretty much the same thing as the other side, but when I go back in to add more detail, I'm still using the lighter colors. And now that I have a lot of the main structures of the right side of the face mapped out and to a slightly darker level, I can see that the left side needs more shading. So you, you'll see me going back and forth adding more and more shading to the face. Even though this is a white dog, the left side of the face does get pretty dark. It is in shadow. When the light is on the right side, the left is going to be able to go to completely black even if the object is white. So that's why I'm able to go in with the black colored pencil and add in the darkest shadows between the hairs on the left side of the face because it was necessary. Shadows are what gives what you're drawing dimension and the black color really helps you bring out the dimension a lot faster especially when that shading is necessary. In this photo there was a lot of shadow on the left side of the face which really helps the image pop. I really like shadows in pictures. If you're choosing a photo to draw I would choose one with a strong light source and a really nice shadow. If you think about it, if this photo had a flash coming from straight on the front, all the hair would be white. It would all be blown out. There wouldn't be dimension. You wouldn't be able to see the shadow between the eyes. You wouldn't be able to see the shadow on the left side of the face on the ear. And it's that shadow that makes the image look much more three-dimensional. So always choose something with a strong shadow and always make sure you're making your values as 
as dark as they need to be. And then I sor sort of lightly outlined the drawing. I wanted to make sure that the dog would stand out because I was going to go with a lighter background for this one. So I wanted to make sure each individual hair stood out on this dog. So I just did a light outline, not a full on solid outline. I wanted to still keep it into a realistic perspective. I went with the hair strokes. I kept the darker lines where it was supposed to be darker in the image and that way the silhouette would be really crisp for this drawing. And then when I went on to the chest, that's when I added more of the depth and that's when I feel like the dog really started to look like the photo and look like the actual dog. Uh, it's really the dimension that the chest brings. It really brought the face forward to do that neck and shoulder and it really made the light perspective stand out and you can tell where the light source is. You could tell that the shading looked normal by the time you get all of the aspects of the picture in there. By the end of the drawing, I just took my kneaded eraser. I molded the eraser to have a bit of a point. I used the eraser to draw on those highlighted areas, even on the darker side. And that picked up enough of the darker colored pencil to bring the paper back to white or pretty close to white in those areas and that helped give the highlights a more natural and highlighted appearance because just leaving out those whites usually won't be enough. That's just what I think. I just think the eraser picking up any extra, even if it looks like it didn't get dirty, even if it looks like it wasn't drawn on at all, it's nice to just go in with the kneaded eraser to pick up those highlights. I was worried to actually go in with a white colored pencil because with colored pencil drawings, it's very easy to smear. And the last thing for this drawing is I chose a light blue color. I thought it was pretty. I thought it went well with the white dog and the cool grays that I chose for it. And I also thought it, it played well with the red harness and the pink in the ears. I thought it really made the dog stand out. Please comment and let me know what you think of this drawing. Let me know what sort of things you'd like to see next. Please like and subscribe, hit that bell, and you can follow me on Instagram at Chromatic Sauce. And thank you so much for watching.